Hi, welcome back to my channel and for this video, we will be talking on the real analysis series about the algebra of sets. Guys, I'm so sorry if I don't have the actual plant with me, but I just want you to know that with this um, picture, I have one of the collections of the Ethan Bacchia. Just take a look into that. And guys, thank you so much for all your support. And for those who are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon, including the abstract series, the linear algebra series, the real analysis, and so on. Okay, so let's start now. Given that you have a non-empty set here, and then um, this one here defines the um, collection of subsets of X, then if you have a non-empty collection um, denoted by the script A, um, such that this is script A is a subset of the power set of X, then this is so-called an algebra if for every A and B, the union is in that set and its complement is also in that set so meaning to say that um, an algebra is closed under finite union also an algebra is closed under complementation that's it okay so two requirements are for us to consider that a given set or a given non-empty collection is a an algebra if it is closed under finite union and it's called closed under complementation. However, if given that we have an algebra here, so suppose that um, we have two sets A and B and they are element from this algebra, then um, by the definition, this implies that the complement of these two sets are in the algebra which further implies that by the definition, if you take the union of this, this is an element of the algebra. And um, observe that this one here is equivalent to the complement of the intersection. And so this is, um, if we may take the complement of this complement, this is the same as this one here. So the intersection of two sets is also close under the algebra. So that's number one remark here. Moreover, if you have an empty set here, um, this empty set is actually an element of the algebra. Why? Because, um, because uh, remember that this algebra is a non-empty collection. So that means it's not empty. And so if this is not empty, we can pick an element A from this non-empty collection, which is an algebra, and that um, um, complement is also in A. So since um, the algebra is closed under the finite union, so I can um, take the union of this. And remember, if I'm gonna take the union of these two here, it's gonna be equal to X. So which means that this is an element of this x here is an element of the algebra. And if I'm going to take the complement of x here, this is equivalent to empty. And so this is element of the algebra. So this is going to be the, the number two remark. So we will consider an example here. We will identify if the following is an algebra or not. Now, number one is pretty obvious. This is an algebra in the sense that this is a consequence of the definition that a given um, non-empty collection, which is a subset of the power set, is an algebra, provided they uh, follow a certain rule. Now, number two, this is a consequence of the remark. So this is an algebra. Let's try number three. Now, um, this is um, this one here, um, this is of this form, your A and B are elements of R. So let's say, for example, uh, I have A here, which is negative 1 to 0. This is an example here because um, negative 1 and 0 is a re are real numbers. And I have B, um, 2, 3. Um, observe that if I'm going to have the union of A and B, I would only have this form 
which in this case in, is no longer an element of this. So therefore, C is not an algebra. That's it. So we will consider a claim here. This claim is actually powerful in the sense that it will open a lot of topics for our succeeding topics in the real analysis series. So here in this case, given you have any collection, um, we have a script C of subsets of X. So there exists a smallest algebra and we denote that by script A sub zero containing the script C. Um, although, um, the notation here is a bit arbitrary. Uh, we will be um, dealing with these notations moving forward unless otherwise stated. So in order for us to show that, we will consider first a collection. So let's have this collection here um, of all um, algebra. So remember that the algebra is a subset of the power set of X. So in this case, this is an algebra. And so, um, this contains the subsets of X. Okay, so our goal here is to find um, a collection which is a smaller of all the um, algebra. Note that um, P of X here, as you can see, is an element of F because remember that your F here contains all A and that's our, our subset of uh, power set of X. It means to say that the power set of X is um, in F which implies that our F is not empty. So we will try to set um, our A sub zero here. Our A sub zero is the intersection of all this script A, such that this is an element of F. So obviously the intersection of all A are, is actually the smallest of all A. Um, that is defined by the basic set theory. So in this case, we will claim that this is an algebra. And by that, we're done once this is shown to be an algebra. So let A and B in script A sub zero. So if this is uh, in the script A sub zero, then um, AB is an element of script A, technically because A sub zero is the smallest of all A. So um, remember, this is an element of F, which implies that A union B is an element of script A. And um, um, A complement is an element of script A. Of course, this is for all script A that is in F. So, meaning to say that our A union B and our A complement is an element of script A sub zero. And so this is an algebra. And we're done. So if you have any questions or clarification, don't hesitate to comment down there so that I would know and we can discuss on that. Okay, for one final result for this video, um, we're given with an algebra script A of subsets of X. And um, we have this um, symbol to denote the sequence of sets of a. Then there exists another sequence of sets in script A such that this one here, this is BN, intersection BM is empty for every index that are not equal. And so the union of AN n from 1 to infinity is just the same as the union of BN n from 1 to infinity. So how do we show that? Let us assume that um, our B1 is equal to A1. So that means um, the initial um, um, sets of, for, for out from the sequence are equal. But um, our BN, um, because this is a sequence here, a different sequence, then we have AN minus the union of AIs, I from 1 to N minus 1. Okay, so we m let M and N be natural numbers. So these are actually index. And then we assume that M is not equal to N. Um, we will assume without loss of generality that um, in this case, M is less than N. Then what happened? So our BM is actually, um, by the definition here, initially, this is N A sub M rather minus the union of A1 to the union of AM minus 1. By basic set theory, this is equivalent to 
um, this minus here becomes intersection, but this is the complement entirely here, this one here. So what happened is, by the Morgan's law, this is this one. And um, the our BN, remember our BN here is greater than M. I mean, the N here, here is greater than M. So what happened is the same with the definition um, on our hypothesis. This is AN intersection A1 to C up until uh, intersection AM complement. But this goes along AN minus 1 because technically um, the N, the index N is greater than the index M. So this one here. So what happened? If I'm going to take the intersection of um, BM, intersection BN, uh, I would have AM, intersection A1 complement up until AM minus 1 complement. So like this. And so this is the intersection of AN, intersection A1 complement up until AM complement up until AN minus 1 complement. You know, I can combine this one here. You know, I can combine this one here. And so this is uh, AM, intersection AM complement and intersection whatever is left here and it's left here because they're all intersections. So there's no problem with that. But um, if you notice, um, this is the AM and this is its complement. So this is technically empty. So whatever would be the resulting set after we take the complement here, let's say uh, whether it's empty or non-empty, if you take the intersection with an empty set, always the result is empty. Now, um, since our BI is a subset of AI, this is for all I in the set of natural number. So this implies that the intersection of bi, i from 1 to infinity is a subset of the intersection of ai, i from 1 to infinity. Okay. Now, uh, we will show the reverse. If we will be able to show the reverse, then we can jump into conclusion that this is equal. Now, we let um, x to be in the union of ai i from 1 to infinity so what does it mean this means to say that your x is an element of a n sub 0 because this is a union then then it, there this is for some n sub 0 in the set of natural number the message for this is that if x is an element of the union it simply tells us that x could be an element in any one of those sets so we let s here to be um, the set of index such that x is an element of ai okay since our n sub 0 is an element of s this only tells us that s is not empty so if s is not empty if you remember the well ordering principle um you might want to check on the thumbnail here that um s has a least element let's say the least element is P. So what does it mean? This means that the P is the smallest index, which is a positive integer, such that um, X is an element of AP. So remember, P here is the smallest. So that's the smallest index, but this is a positive integer. This implies that X is not an element of the union of AI i from 1 to p minus 1 because p here is the smallest so for those less than p um that x is no longer an element of that so this imply that x is an element of a p minus those at which x cannot be found so that's from i from 1 to p minus 1 this is by definition this is b sub p here so meaning to say that your x is an element of the union of bi, i from 1 to infinity because it's found in b sub p, which simply tells us that um, ai, i from 1 to infinity is a subset of the union of bi, i from 1 to infinity. So we've shown this one here and we've shown this one here, which simply tells us that 
the union of a i i from 1 to infinity is equal to the union of b i i from 1 to infinity and so we're done so that's all for now thank you so much for watching so if you have any questions or clarification don't hesitate to comment down there so that i would know thank you guys and hope to see you soon for another video so the uh, please be updated for a lot of videos that i'll be uploading and thank you and have a great day bye for now